let's just step through a few slides to actually sort of lay out how we came to the conclusion that we must have a three-year highly achievable goal. Now, our view of building this up looks like a house, with the leader being the foundation, understanding their core purpose of the organization, their core values, and these are the core values of themselves, as well as the team members they're actually going to build and achieve the goal with. And then we need to know where we're going. So we need a 10 to 30 year goal. Most companies don't have a 10 to 30 year goal. If you don't, I want you to start thinking about that. It's hard, but we must write it down. The next piece is once we have the team and we have, we're thinking about core purpose, core values, we know where we're going. Any team that's going to achieve a goal must be as cohesive as possible. And we have to spend time on it, not just once a year. We have to spend time every day, every week, every month, every quarter. The next piece is the human system. Not HR, not human resources. This is a human system to take care of your A players. A players need to be in a system. They know exactly how they're going to be treated and it must be ongoing consistently. The leaders make up the very top roof of the house and the leaders sandwich it all together. They work with the leader, the CEO of the company to ensure all these systems are in place. The cultural system, which is the foundation, the cohesive system, which ensures the team remains intact and focused on a team win. And the human system that ensures that each person is treated equally, fairly, fairly recognized, etc. The team is at the very top of the house. All the information that we know about what's happening in the house and around the house, we have to flow through the team. The team holds our reputation in the marketplace. They're the ones who touch our customers, our partners, and they must be able to actually say exactly what the leader knows and would say at the foundation of the house. This is key. It's key to decision making. Inside the house, we're going to have a strategic thinking system. This is the core of the three hag, our three year highly achievable goal. There are so many tools out there that actually help us, you know, come up with and look at our company from many different ways, but there isn't one framework that you should actually step through. That's what we're going to accomplish today with the three hag program. The other system that we have to have in place, which most companies do is an execution plan. And it's an execution system to ensure we know exactly what we need to do today, what we need to do next week, what we need to do in the month, the quarter and the year. And these things go hand in hand. And the key to this is by having all these systems work together in one rhythm, it's what creates the metronome effect. It's that one rhythm together where we know the rhythms in place and we're going to be putting in place and working on every day on our business as well as in our business. So the alignment that we're looking for and how it lines up is thinking about, we have to understand our core purpose and core values. We need to know our 10 year goal, 10 to 30 year goal. It has to be hairy and audacious as Jim Collins points out, it's gotta be big. We don't need to know how to get there. Our three year highly achievable goal in contrast, we must know how to get there. It is so close. You can reach out and touch it. Our one year goal, our one year, a run hag, one year highly achievable goal is even closer. We must be so specific in how to get there and it has to align to our three year and our 10 to 30 year. Then if we think about our 90 day execution plan, most companies have this but it's usually not aligned all the way through one year out, three years out, 10 years out. So we want to make sure all these things line up. And as we actually build these plans and start executing, as we get the feedback and we see the results, we need to feed it back into the one year plan, the three year plan and the 10 to 30 year plan. This actually lines up to looking at the house. And the first cultural foundation piece of the house was all about core values, core purpose, and big, hairy, audacious goal, our 10 to 30 year goal. 
This is our culture. The CEO owns these columns of the one page plan. And we'll talk a little bit more about the one page plan that Vern Harnish brought forward in another segment. Now column three is the key piece that we learned. If we put a goal down three years away and we actually map every month from now to then and look at all the pieces, all the core tools we have around strategy, we'll take something very complex and make it clear and simple. And then we'll line up our execution plans. We'll write them down, we'll work through it. So this picture for us, we actually you know, drew it up together as a leadership team as we were learning this. We actually put it on the wall and we actually helped us to keep focus on all the systems that were running in our organization. And not just the leadership team knew of this actual picture of a house and where strategic thinking, where the three hag fit, it's right in the middle. We have to tie everything together with where we're going. I do want to step in a little further into these systems. The cultural system is made up of core values, core purpose, and I said BHAG. The other piece is we've got to create a picture, a picture so that the team can relate to. You heard me earlier say, talk about strategic pictures. This is the first picture we want to draw. And if we can actually see our culture, it sounds ridiculous, but we see our culture, we live our culture, it becomes strong, it becomes known and very clear. The CEO owns this. And the more the CEO focuses on this piece, the easier it is to actually create your strategy and execute. Now, this is an organizational chart that you're looking at, and it's not necessarily represents a cohesive team. Every company has one of these. And this is as much as I wanted to get rid of this in my own companies, we needed this just for clarity of how we actually all fit together. But this is not a cohesive team. A cohesive team is all about how we grow a team, focus a team, on one result, not individual results, one results. And it starts with the foundation of trust, having and ensuring there's courage at the table to say what needs to be said so we can drive to healthy discussions, commit to, the, commit to goals, be accountable, and then we are going to actually drive towards a team win. When we play sports, take a soccer game. We, it's a team on a field driving towards a win. A business team is no different. We need to have that exact same focus on winning the game. And by setting this up as 90 day periods, one year, three year, things we absolutely need to know how to achieve, it helps us get focused on the team result. The human system is based upon Brad Smart's top grading. And it's all about recruiting and hiring nine of 10 times A players. We, when they join the organization, it's obvious we must orient them and train them. But in high growth companies, we're going very, very fast. And that part is usually missed. So we just need a consistent way of people to actually onboard into our company. We must have a scorecard. No different than what I just talked about, a team actually driving towards a certain result. Each individual member must know what they need to do to help actually, you know, apply themselves to the team result. No different than if you're playing on a soccer field. You're playing right wing, you are actually going to apply your skills to that position. We must actually coach our A players, spend time with them. That allows us to keep them. They'll attract more. The more A players you have, the more A players you'll get. And of course, you must have a regular review. Best practice is every 90 days to review your team members. And then of course a reward. And most A players want some recognition more than any uh, financial compensation. We've seen that over and over. They wanna know that you know they're killing it, which normally they always are. Strategy. The effect of strategy and the system around strategy is the biggest thing and what this program is focused on. The three year highly achievable goal for us came out of taking all these pieces that we see, all the steps through this, all the tools that are out there. And we used many, many tools from Michael Porter to Bob Bloom, Jim Collins. Well, the one thing that we found is that they're very siloed. 
So we actually put it into a regular rhythm of looking through and looking at these tools and we made them into pictures. And that's what we're going to step through today. Last piece is execution. And as much as we can say everybody executes, not everyone executes towards uh, their strategy and towards their three year highly achievable goal. We've got to make it clear and memorable. We've got to make it simple, simple to remember. The last piece of the metronome effect that we didn't talk about in the house, but as you can imagine, a house needs power, just like a company needs cash. And cash is going to drive your business. We actually took a tool that Vern Harnish used called the cash tool and we mapped it out. And we're going to step through that tool today. It's very, very key, not only to see the operation, the efficient operation of your business, but to actually find some strategic pieces in your business that you might not be aware of. For us, cash is king. And it sounds ridiculous that, um, you know, we would have to say that out loud, but so many companies are focused on profit rather than cash. And at the end of the day, it's the cash in the bank that's going to keep you focused on your strategy driving forward. The more cash you have, the less you'll focus on it and the more you'll focus on the strategy. That cash will allow you to drive your company forward. The biggest effect of this framework is all about everyday decisions. And when I learned it, I was five years into my first company, CEO, and people were coming asking me questions about people, strategy, execution, and cash and asking me to answer the questions. Once we got this in line in a place where everyone could see where we're going, everybody could see the strategic pictures and knew what we had to do to accomplish that, everybody made decisions every day. This is the metronome effect. This is the key to predicting the future. We used the Vern Harnish's one page plan to record our plan. And the key to this was it was one page plan, two pages printed to one, cheater, cheater, but it forced us to be succinct, to write it down in phrases that we could remember and allow us all to be able to tell the story. There's a lot of work that goes in behind this plan. The, you know, your three year highly achievable goal alone takes hours and hours and continuous hours. You're never going to stop working on your strategy, but this was a way to actually check in, share it with the whole team and make it visible. So we are going to focus on column three of Vern Harnish's one page plan. Column one and column two, as we talked about, is all about culture. And it's all about why the organization exists, core values, as well as your big, hairy, audacious goal. If you haven't written these down, what I call gutting it out, I would suggest you answer these questions right now. Write down why your organization exists purely from your gut and write down a big, hairy, audacious goal for your company 10 to 30 years from now.